and happy holiday season! My name is Morgan and welcome to my booktube channel. December and the holidays are my favourite time of year. December is also my birthday month, which makes it even better, but it can also be a very stressful time of year because it's the end of the term, because there are presents to buy and people to see and just so many things you want to get done before the end of the year and your 2021 New Year's resolutions go unresolved. In 2021 I made it my Goodreads goal to read 52 books in the year, which was going to be a challenge because I've never read nearly that many books in a year. Right now, as of December 3rd, I am at 31 books. So, I mean, that's not terrible, but can I read 21 books in the next month? Almost definitely no. <laughs> that said, I'm gonna try. <laughs> so that's what this video is then, my December TBR, in which I try to figure out how I can meet my Goodreads challenge goal by the end of the year. Also, just a side note, I think I'm probably going to switch to the Storygraph app instead of Goodreads to track my reading goals. I love the little uh, pie charts that they provide for you, and I love the fact that they sort of curate your review, including trigger warnings, which I think is super important. So my Goodreads account might disappear in the next little bit, but I am on Storygraph under the same name. Also, I'm wearing a band-aid on my finger because I literally got a paper cut while moving around a big stack of books earlier today. How fitting for a booktube channel. I'm probably going to be running around trying to find the different books that are going to complete my month for me, so um, I'm gonna be a little all over the place in this video, but bear with me. So I want to start by talking about the book I just finished yesterday. I finished it on December 2nd, so it I guess is included in a December TBR, which is Stephen Graham Jones's book My Heart is a Chainsaw. I've never read any books by Stephen Graham Jones. I wasn't sure where to start, but the cover of My Heart is a Chainsaw. I just love so much and I was like, I sometimes I pick up a book because the cover is just too good not to read the book. I ended up giving the book 2.5 stars on Storygraph. It's not that like I, I think it's a bad book, I just wasn't really vibing with it. I also think it might have been the audiobook narration, which to me felt really like cheery and chipper and fast paced, but at the end of the day I think it's supposed to be a horror novel and those didn't mesh for me. The, the, the tone of the narration and what I thought maybe should have been the tone of the story. So that might have ruined the experience for me. I don't think I'm going to continue reading the series regardless. I mean, unless the next books have really great cover art too, so. The other book that I'm about to finish is, let me just grab it, <clears throat> The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. This is the third book in the Broken Earth trilogy, a trilogy which I have thoroughly enjoyed every second of the entire time I've read it. I highly recommend this trilogy. There are surprises until the very end. That said, I still have 60 pages left, so no spoilers in the comments, please. I'm not going to explain the book to you. I'll probably do some, some bigger video where I talk about the entire trilogy, but suffice it to say, it's excellent. And then as soon as I finished My Heart is a Chainsaw on audio, I picked up another audiobook because I feel like audiobooks Listening to books while you're doing the dishes or exercising or whatever is a great way to get in a couple extra reads before the end of the year. So I picked up, I put into my ears Ubik by Philip K. Dick. His name rhymes with the book title. It's funny. That's what it's called, right? Ubik. Ah! Okay. Ubik is only an eight hour audiobook, so I'm confident I can finish that before the end of the year and maybe even another audiobook. Not sure what that will be yet. Philip K. Dick is the guy that wrote Do Androids Dream of Electric Sleep, but I'm listening to this book on Scribd. That app doesn't have Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep as an audiobook, so I had to choose a different Philip K. Dick book, and I chose Ubik. I'm not far enough into it yet to fully grasp what it's about, but from what I gather, I think it was written in 1969 and it's about like the 1990s as like this futuristic setting, which is hilarious. But from what I gather, people are able to like psychically tune in to others. And so big corporations need psychic security against those psychic threats. And so the main characters all work for this company, which is a security company who hires like psychic security guards for companies. It's unclear as of yet whether there actually are psychic threats or whether this company just like 
made themselves up to to as like a money grab. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure a lot of these like security guard people start going missing though and they need to figure out why. What Ubik actually is? I'm not yet certain. It is some product that might be behind the disappearance of the security guard type people. Sounds like it's gonna be a wild ride. I don't typically like listening to this style of like complex sci-fi over audio because I just don't digest the information as well. So we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna try to get through it because again, I wanna keep consuming those books to get closer to my Goodreads goal. Okay, so those are all the books that I'm like reading or have just read right now. Next, let's talk about two books that I want to finish before next Friday because they are books for a book club that I am a part of that is meeting, I think next Friday. So the first one, is They Said This Would Be Fun by Eternity Martis. Race, Campus Life, and Growing Up is the subtitle. Eternity Martis went to Western University in London, Ontario, not far from where I am. This book is a memoir that catalogs her experiences growing up as a Black woman in a Canadian university. However, since then, Eternity Martis went on to become a journalist, and so there's a lot of journalistic elements to this book as well. There are lots of sections where it's just statistics and further information about how universities deal with racism on campus, for instance. It is a challenging book to get through because, I mean, she's just late teens when she's going through the events of this book, and yet she has experienced intimate partner violence and sexual harassment and very like open racism. I think it's a really important book though because it exposes people to the like intimate details of what goes on off university campuses and is assumed to be a part of university life. Like for instance, binge drinking. Very eye-opening, enlightening book. This would be a great book for university professors and parents in particular. And then the other book that we're reading, this is a book club about teaching. The other book is We Want to Do More Than Survive, Abolitionist Teaching and the Pursuit of Educational Freedom. I'm almost done. They said this would be fun. I have not yet started we Want to Do More Than Survive by Bettina L. Love. That said, I'm more excited for this book because I think it, it's actually from the professor's perspective and might actually give me some teaching practices or ideologies that I can start subscribing to. And I think there will be a lot to learn from this book. From the back of the book, it says, We Want to Do More Than Survive introduces an alternative to traditional modes of educational reform and expands our ideas of civic engagement and intersectional justice which I love, I'm ready to embrace it. So once I finish those books, that'll be an extra four books. So I'll be at 35. The next little section of books that I want to discuss is books that my mom gave me in the past year that I have not yet finished and I should because I asked my mom for more books for Christmas this year. One of the books on that list of books I'm, I'm not going to read because it's Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace and it's way too long, can't just read that in a month. That'll be a new year project. But the other two books are, firstly, How to Pronounce Knife, and I probably will mess up the pronunciation of the author's name, by Suvankam Tamavongza. Suvankam is a Canadian writer. She won the Scotiabank Giller Prize in 2019, 2020, recently. And that is why my mom gifted this to me last year. I read the first few short stories and the writing is excellent. The stories are thought provoking. I look forward to finishing this book. I also think this will be a nice quick one that I can read stories from throughout December to ultimately add another book to my reading goal. And the other one my mom gave me because she's a psychotherapist is Hold Me Tight by Dr. Sue Johnson your guide to the most successful approach to building loving relationships. And Dr. Johnson created this apparently highly effective therapy program called Emotionally Focused Couple Therapy based on attachment theory. Apparently this is like the most recommended book by couples therapists. So I'm interested to learn about attachment theory and how to have the most loving relationships I can in my life. Okay, let's slot in here a book that I've started and I want to finish by the end of the year. And that book is 
Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World by Cal Newport. This book is frequently recommended by PhD and productivity YouTubers here, so I thought I should pick it up. In the new year, I want to really start focusing on the writing portion of my PhD dissertation, maybe do some like PhD writing vlogs here on YouTube to motivate myself, and that really requires focused work free from distraction. I'm hoping that this book by Cal Newport can teach me when that style of work is required and how to achieve it to the best of my ability for a smooth PhD writing process. Okay, I found a few more books um, <laughs> that I started in 2021 and I should just finish in 2021. Three books that I am so close to the end of and I should just, I should just finish them add them to my Goodreads thingy or story graph. Okay, one I started so long ago, Born to Run by Christopher McDougall, a hidden tribe, super athletes, and the greatest race the world has never seen. I was reading a lot of running books at the beginning of 2021, and I still plan on making a YouTube video about books about running. This is a great one, maybe the most read book on running in ever, maybe. It kind of is preaching a style of running that is more minimalist. So it discusses the way that running shoe companies have added increasing cushioning and fancy technologies into our running shoes when really there are people in the world to this day that simply run on sandals and they can run farther and faster and longer than most people in the world on normal running shoes. So this book is very inspiring for me. Another nonfiction book that I have started and I'm almost finished with, but I just haven't finished, is Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake, subtitled How Fungi Make Our Worlds, Change Our Minds, and Shape Our Futures. Literally, it's all about fungi. I don't know what more to tell you. Really good so far. <laughs> And this next one is a fiction book that I started in like July and I read throughout the summer and it's a beast. It's a huge book. I'm currently on page 995. I've read almost a thousand pages of this book. So like I should finish it. And that is The Stand by Stephen King. One of the reasons that I picked up this book in the first place is because this series was coming out for The Stand. Turns out the series, not that good would not recommend. It made me actually more impressed by Stephen King's ability to write a straightforward narrative about a wide cast of characters. Stephen King himself, I think, did it so much better, and I wish the series had just followed his lead on that one. This book is about a, a contagion, a virus that wipes out like 99.9% of the population, and those that are left over start having these dreams, either of this dark man or of this old woman. Basically the dark man is evil and the old woman is good and it's this big standoff between good and evil. That's the concept. The final section of my December TBR is books that I haven't started but I want to pick up this month if I can. The first book is a book that I want to get to because it's borrowed from somebody else and I don't like keeping those on my shelf too long anymore because then I just forget where they came from. So that book is The Clay Girl by Heather Tucker, and this was lent to me by my aunt. I love reading books that other people have read so that we can talk about them, so I'm looking forward to that. This is not a book that I would usually pick up, so it's exciting that I'm going to read in a genre that is atypical for me. The book is set in the 1960s, and it's about a young girl whose father commits suicide, and then she, I think, is like pinged around to different homes. From the back of the book it says, coming of age in the sexual revolution and drug culture of the 1960s, Ari struggles with her father's legacy and her mother's addictions. Testing limits with substances that numb and men who show her kindness, Ari spins through a chaotic decade of love and loss, the devilish and divine, with wit, tenacity, and the astonishing balance unique to seahorses. I'm pretty sure the girl has an imaginary friend that is a seahorse, hence the seahorse on the cover page. Another genre that I don't usually read, but I am interested in picking up this month is graphic novel. This is The Umbrella Academy, the source material for the Netflix series The Umbrella Academy. It is about this 
really rich man who adopted seven children of the 43 children who were spontaneously born by women who weren't previously pregnant. And he like trains these super children who have these weird powers in his uh, mansion house. And things get really weird. And I love me a weird fantastical sci-fi. This is also, I, I hope, going to be a, a fairly quick read to add another title to the list. Um, another quick-ish read that I recently found at my local Value Village, a second-hand clothing shop, is Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. This was shortlisted for the 2020 Booker Prize. I think that the cover art is beautiful. I love this light purple. It is the story of a mother and daughter set in India, and it's about their relationship and the daughter's own self-discovery. So I'm looking forward to this one and maybe recommending it to my mom if it's a good one. And finally, the book I'm most excited for this month, and so I want to carve out time for, but it's a big book, <laughs> so it might restrict me from being able to read all of these other ones or finish all of these other ones I've discussed, is ugh, Christopher Paolini's To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. I got this many months ago because I really love the cover art and I really love the premise of the story. And I really, I, I love like, if this is a good immersive piece of fiction that I can't put down, I love that it's long and it's a sci-fi and that I just, it feels like December is a good month to just like cozy up with like a hot chocolate and a really big book that I just want to live inside. And I'm really hoping that that's what this book is. That is what I want my birthday gift to be to myself, to like just sit down for hours on end and just get immersed in a fictional world. That is my hope for this book. I got it so long ago, I barely remember what it's about from the inside cover. During a routine survey mission on an uncolonized planet, Kira finds an alien relic. At first, she's delighted, but elation turns to terror when the ancient dust around her begins to move. As war erupts among the stars, Kira is launched into a galaxy-spanning odyssey of discovery and transformation. First contact isn't at all what she imagined, and events push her to the very limits of what it means to be human. While Kira faces her own horrors, Earth and its colonies stand upon the brink of annihilation. Now, Kira might be humanity's greatest and final hope. So I am very hopeful that I will get through this this month. I'm gonna make it happen. This is the one that I'm like, if nothing else, I will finish the Broken Earth trilogy and to sleep in a sea of stars this month, if nothing else but hopefully also something else. So that is my ambitious-ish December TBR. I've started a lot of those books already, so hopefully they don't take me too long to finish. Let me know what books you need to finish by the end of the year. If I finish all of these books, I will have read this many books this year. I'm not sure what that number is. Hopefully it's close-ish to 52. Regardless, I'm probably going to make 52 my goal again for 2022 to see if I can actually reach it next year. That's a book a week in the year. It sounds like a manageable goal, so surely one year I'll be able to reach it. Anyway, have a lovely holiday season. I'll be back with another video soon. Thanks for watching.